Got a cracking signal here, reading 1246. I'm in the fields just behind my house. This is the first decent signal, so it says it's about 8 to 10 inches deep, so I'll give it a dig. Not to worry, it's not too far from the house. I'll put a stick in there and uh, I'll come back when the ground's defrosted. I'm not going to dig all the way through that. Why have you forsaken me? Let's face it, when the weather's as hard as this, snow covering the ground, the earth's like stone, you can't dig anything out even if you do get a good signal. Best thing to do is probably just to sit in front of a nice warm fire in your house Watch other people finding stuff in countries where the ground isn't so hard and there isn't any snow. This episode really does have some great finds, as have the previous three episodes. Um, and I do really appreciate everybody who sends me a submission for one of these videos. I cannot make these videos without your help. Basically, you make these videos possible. You can send me a video via a message on YouTube if you've uploaded it to YouTube. Or, if you've got it uploaded somewhere else, you can send me the link to pondguru at btinternet.com. That address is down in the description here. If you don't want the video that you've made to show on your channel on YouTube, then upload it as unlisted instead of public. If you upload it as private, I won't be able to download it and therefore I won't be able to use it in these episodes. So remember, if you don't want it to show on your channel, upload it as unlisted. You do that at the time of upload. Welcome to part four! Well, hey guys, um, this is a US Army first aid kit label. This was found approximately six to eight inches down in very sandy soil in um, Queensland, Australia. Uh, I found this in about November of 2012. And my name is John24Gold1 for my YouTube channel. Hello, I'm Richard, also known as Pond Guru. This is the find that I'd like to show for this video. It's a German Iron Cross, first class, from 1914. It's lost the black enamel off here, but you can plainly see what it is. Although, I do have to confess, when I found it, I didn't know what it was. I always thought German crosses were a little bit smaller. So, I made a bit of a fool of myself when I was uh, videoing that one, initially. But, that's quite a nice find. It was found about eight to nine inches down with the E-Track on pasture. So I'm sure some people would think that would make a nice necklace. Some people are strange though. Now for the German soldiers in World Wars One and Two, it would have been a big deal to wear one of those. It's, it would be a very cherished item. And I know my segment here is gonna run on a little bit beyond the 45 seconds to a minute that I ask other people to stick to, but I've actually got footage of a German guy who was involved in the Second World War and he's explaining exactly what it means to have lost one of them um, and he's pretty passionate about it so check this out thanks for watching well, you've got to have a laugh, haven't you? <laughs> Hi guys, my find of the month this month is a Henry VII half groat. It's quite clipped. Um, Canterbury Mint. It was found with the Technetics T2 on rolled and seeded field. And it was found about two to three inches down. So I hope you like my find. Thanks for watching.
This is probably one of my best finds I've had for a little while. I get a lot of coins, but this is proper history. This is a seconds to burst fuse off a 199 anti-aircraft shell. It's World War II. It's got a manufacturing date of December 1939. This would have been screwed on top of the shell and then fired up, depending on the seconds timer. Would have detonated at the right height, hopefully taken out the German bombers. Plymouth was heavily bombed in World War II. The last time this was touched was by one of our guys firing this up, hopefully to uh, take out the Germans. <laughs> what are you? you? You can't be led, surely. Oh, you're white. You are white. You are threatening to be silver. Beautiful, solid silver. 1819 George the Third half crown. What a belter. <laughs> Till I see you next time. Bye. That's got to be extremely fine, hasn't it? Hi, I'm Gary. My channel on YouTube is name is Hiliac. This is my find for Pongaroo's um, metal detecting find series. Um, it's a lead trading token or bartering token dating back to the 15th or 16th century. It was used um, for various transactions or even gaming tokens, all sorts of different uh, different things. It was found near Newport in Shropshire with an XP dais and it was at a depth of about 6 inches. It was a very good signal. The ground was um, worked down potato ground. Ok, cheers. Hey Pongaroo, this is for the Worldwide Metal Detecting Find, number 4. I found this. It's a uh, little medallion of Jesus. On this side, and it says Lady of Fatima on the other side. It's uh, silver, made in Italy, about five, six inches down. I use the White's IDX Pro with a carrot pinpointer. It's at a local park. Hello, everyone. Name's Wayne. This is my next find. This was found on the same day and the same spot as I found the Persian gold coin. This was about six feet away. And this is from the mid 1700s. It's got a date there of 1746. And this is believed to be a Spanish cob uh, with two. It's two real cob. And that's another good find I have. Also found with a Technetics Omega 8000. Also around six inches down. Okay. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, Rob here from YouTube's Roman Rob 957. The find I've got for you today to look at is my very first find, the find that got me hooked on the on the metal detecting scene. It was found with a detector which only cost about £50, uh, a gold something, I can't even remember its name now. A good little detector though. Um, and it's here, it's the RP Warden badge. And this badge was found around about three inches deep, not very deep at all, but it was under a bush in the countryside. Um, we had it looked at and it was uh, a munitions company during the war, Second World War, on the back of the Thames. Thanks very much. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Mark, I'm from the Netherlands and my YouTube channel is 1979MDG. And uh, this is my entry for the World Best Finds. Um, This is um, a Mount Stirrup and um, it's from the 12th century and I found it on a medieval dump site. Fortunately I can't go there anymore. Um, it's made out of brass and uh, it's one of my best finds. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Donc, ben, vous le voyez, un trou d'environ 10 cm à peine. Et puis attendez, voilà, c'est là. Là, vous voyez là Hop, on prend ça ensemble. 
Alors, qu'est-ce que c'est comme monnaie bon, On dirait qu'il y a une jolie patine dessous. Euh, le soleil s'est caché depuis un moment. Hello, this is my entry for the Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds. My name is John. My YouTube name is Jet Ski John 2006, all one word. Uh, this is the item I found in October of last year, which is a Roman swatch sticker mount. Unfortunately, I've only got the photograph of it on my computer, which you can see now, uh, as it's been sent to my local FLO. And now it's been re being referred to London for further investigation to find out exactly what it's, uh, what type of mount it is or where it come from. So there you go. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, also, it was found with the Garrett Ace 250 in Lincolnshire, about four inches deep. Bye for now. Now that find there. Roman, although it did have a swastika on it, swastikas were also found in the Egyptian pyramids. Um, it goes way back, but people just seem to associate it with the Nazis. And the Nazis adopted it from an ancient symbol, which didn't have the same sort of fear attached to it. I do know one fella in, who actually hunts in Germany. He's got quite a successful set of videos on YouTube. I'm sure he would have loved to have found that Roman swastika or that, because that's kind of what he's into, he, he would have loved that. All oh, right, no, I was thinking of Deep Digger Dan. That's a lot for this episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed making it. And if you have enjoyed it, click the like button, subscribe, subscribe to all those people who've taken the time to make a short video as a submission for this episode. That would be very much appreciated. Feel free to post this video on any forum, Facebook pages, all of that lot. Get it out there. I want more submissions coming in. This has got to be a regular thing because it's, it's good. I like where this is going. And on the subject of Facebook pages, I do have four groups that I would like to give a mention to. Uh, hence the bit of paper, I've got a really awful memory. Firstly, Metal Detecting Finds. Second, Uncharted Coins and Relics. Thirdly, Sand and Land Detectorists. And lastly, Relic Hunter Magazine. Links to all those pages can be found in the video description if you're watching on YouTube. If not, Click to go onto YouTube if you're watching on a forum, check them out and join them. I'm sure they would love a few more members. They're pretty well supported, but you can never have too many members. Again, a huge thank you to everybody who sent me videos for this episode. Please continue to send me more. Anybody else who's watching who hasn't yet submitted a video, get one sent in. The details of how to submit one are at the end of this video. You make this video what it is. People watch it, they appreciate it, they subscribe to me, they subscribe to everybody else. They click like, they share it, post it on forums. That makes this series so good. Not me, you. Thank you very much.
guess. Welcome to part four.